Like I buried my faith with you I'm screaming at a God I don't know if I believe in Cause I don't know what else I can do I'm still holding on to everything that's dead and gone I don't wanna say goodbye Cause this one means forever Now you're in the stars and six feet's never felt so far Here I am alone between the heavens and the embers Oh, it hurts so hard For a million different reasons You took the best of my heart And left the rest in pieces Digging through your old birthday letters A crumpled 20 still in the box I don't think that I could ever find a way to spend it Even if it's the last 20 that I've got oh, I'm still holding on to everything that's dead and gone I don't wanna say goodbye cause this one means And left the rest in peace You've been in the dark with your restless heart long enough Waiting for the light with your eyes shut tight and your wings wrapped I always knew they'd come a day 
I'd have to watch you fly away So fly, 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 butterfly Let your colors paint the sky Be beautiful and free
this time. And this morning I say thank you, Father, for all that you have done. We honor you again. We glorify you again. We ask God that you place your Holy Spirit amongst your people in the house this morning. Saturate your presence in this place with your presence this morning, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit abide with us in the house that we will focus on you this morning, knowing that we have a God to serve and a God to glorify. And we do not just live the way we want to because we are accountable to a Savior. Oh God, we look to you this morning by faith believing that there will be a shift in the atmosphere. People will see things God's way this morning and not our way, Lord. I ask that you touch bodies this morning, touch minds this morning, touch souls this morning, touch our spirits this morning, and let the Holy Spirit overwhelm us in this house. But all persons who are supposed to be take part in the service, I ask God that you empower them. Give them the strength to do what you have asked them to do. It's not to our will, not to our purpose, Lord, but to your will and to your purpose. I ask God that you cover the leader this morning, cover the preacher this morning, cover the mother this morning, cover the father this morning, cover family members this morning under your holy anointing and let your presence be experienced in our midst as never before. Let your Holy Ghost power move in this house that lives will be changed, lives will be transformed and someone will say I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in your presence Lord daily. I live Thank you, Father, for this moment. Thank you for what you are going to do in our service and what you will continue to do. I say thanks to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, church. I am your moderator for this morning's service. My name is Econ Ezra the Hilton Thomas, and I just want to welcome you all on behalf of our pastor, officers, members of the Ebenezer Baptist Church. You all are welcome at the Ebenezer. We welcome you to the Thanksgiving service of Aiden Anthony Bartley. This is Freedom Hall, where everyone is somebody, and where worship is free. We just want to welcome especially the persons from Charity. Welcome to you all. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power.
taken from Revelation 21, 1 to 7, and this will be done by Maureen Christie McDonald called Mother. After which we'll have a selection by Sergeant Dean Clover. Our first scripture reading will be taken from Revelation 21, 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the mountain of the water of life freely. Seventh and last. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is a portion of God's holy word. Can we worship the Lord? I stand here this morning, ladies and gentlemen, with mixed feelings looking at Adon in the casket, very peaceful. And I know for sure that he will be with his maker. I want to ex extend condolences to my friend Gally, affectionately called, and the rest of her family. I met them when I came to Fort Bath in 2004 as a young constable. The death of Aiden and the others that Cherry Tree Lane still resonates in my mind. And I want us as a people and as a community to understand that it's just not well. This can't be the place where we want to live, to retire and to do business and raise families. It just cannot be that you can't sit down and chill and you're not being impeded by criminals and their activities. And so this morning is a call to all of us that we will have to take a stand. We will have to control our own children because those who have committed the crime are children of others. And so every single one of us as parents and as, as Gally cried, we must understand that if it continues, at some point in time, we are going to cry as well. So it behoves all of us to understand that crime does not affect one person. Today is her crying moment and her family, but tomorrow might be yours. And if you see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, when the time has come for you, you alone will cry. And so I'm respectfully asking that as we, as communities, let us do what is right. Let us grow our children and we know that they are involved in wrongdoing. Talk to them because it may affect you in the long run. And so, Yali, as you requested me to sing, I want to do this song. I made it emotional. You know, when I spoke to Mrs. Logan and she told me 
that Aiden was one of the top students. I'm just looking on myself as a child going to school and you know you have those dreams and they were cut short by woodlots who thinks that they controls earth. But I know that they doesn't control earth. It's the Lord God controls earth. And at some point in time when I visited the locals and I saw the blood, I said that this blood is resting on somebody's shoulder. Amen. And at some point in time, they are going to get their just reward. So even if we cry today, there's going to be a time when we're going to smile again. May his soul rest in peace. In the dark of the midnight, as I often hid my face, while the storm holds above me, and there is no hiding place. When the clash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Oh Lord God, till the storm passes over. The thunder sounds no more till the clouds gone forever from the sky. Hold me fast and let me stand in the heart of thy hand. Till the storm passes by Many times Satan whispers There is no use you try For there is no end to your soul
I said when the long night has ended and the storm comes no more, may you dwell. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Thanks be to you. We just want to welcome Pastor Sheldon Gibbons, and if there's any other pastor in the house, we welcome you. Welcome, Councillor Romain Morris. At the midnight cry, we be going home. I hear the sound of mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can go. Hear the trumpet as Gabriel sound the call. At the midnight, we be moving. 
we'll have we go into our tributes. Our first tribute will be from Councillor Romaine Morris, cousin Clement Drummond, Godfather. And the third one will be from Ezri O. Dorway, Forecast Audience Guidance Councillor. In that order, please. Good afternoon, church. God is good. All the time. Even every morning. God is good. Church. <laughs> Today is a day that I wasn't prepared for. Today is a day where my heart crumbled. My heart is broken. I know Andrea, that's where of course we're going to the same school. Her mommy is my auntie. I know Wayne and I know everybody. And I watch her grow. I watch her grow. Yes, that's good, that's good. That's good. I watch her grow and I watch her produce. I watch her become a woman, a responsible woman, a woman that does everything like almost all of us, with all of us. The kids, she takes care of our kids, do whatever it takes to ensure that they're happy. And when I got the phone call, I said, how? When? And I said, why? And I went to the hospital. And I saw her. I couldn't, I, could, I, I, I don't know how to express how I feel. Oh, you see, you know, people say them belly pain. It's something like somebody stopped me in my heart. When I watched her cry, I felt so useless. I felt so useless, Sergeant Cover, to be that. I said that I'm a part of the system, and the system failed. My family. How could I be a part of a system? Watching my cousins cry. And when I could be in the cousin in a casket, he knew school. Here. So while I was at the door, the message came. But for every one of us, I think Sergeant Cole said it. There is a part of the job. No matter how good we want to be, no matter how bad we say we are, there is a God that put that in the contract that each of us will have to die. And I want to believe that Kente came here and he did his purpose. Because I believe that each and every one of us here is here for a purpose. Because my God is an awesome God. My God don't make mistakes. It will hurt us. It will make us bomb. To make our belly fat time come like the job out of my God knows what he's doing. He put us all here, cause all of us to gather here. So today, Father God, I risk this one. I risk this one. I risk this one, Father God. And 
your feet. I rest this one with you. Because I know you're a God that never fails us. I want to believe that Kent did his purpose. He's run his race. God is good, church. All the time. God bless everybody. Thank you. Good morning, church. As we gather here today to celebrate the life of our dear beloved one, which is Aiden, otherwise known as Kente, our property to many of us. It is a very sad and very emotional day for many of us, especially those who were very close to Kente, those who know Kente, know his characteristics, know the, how humble, how affectionate he was. But words cannot explain a new tribute will ever heal the pain that the mother and father is feeling right now. But we hope and pray that as they are going through this and we are going through it together, we know that God will heal them. So to my friend, my son, my confidant, gone too soon. Your brief life was like flickering candle that lit my world. Before it began, was snuffed out by those who had trivial art. I will cling to the memories of, the, of your life, your sweet smile, your joyful laugh. My heart will forever fill with the vacuum of your loss. There is no grief like a grief that does not speak. Grief cannot be shared. Everyone carries its own, its own burden in its own grief. The price we pay for a loved one. My precious one, go far from us and out of our sight. Your spirit lives within us forever. My sorrow and grief turning into a bitter cup of wine reminded me love is stronger than death. Your legacy your memories is more than the length of day. So I will carry your memories always, believing this difficult time, we will pass it. Somehow, we somehow, we must try to bear this as we carry it on. Your memory will always be guiding us. Oh, when a little child departs, we who are left behind must realize God loved them more. And for you, and for know, knowing that you will forever be in the arms of our faith Savior. We know there are few children angels, but we know you are one of those that will be 
in the arms of our Savior looking down on us and smiling. I say goodbye to you now. Until we meet again, Aiden, we shall meet again in heaven. Thank you. This morning, as guidance counselor, I'm representing the Board of Governors, the principal, the teachers, students, and parents of four parts. And I stand here today trying to find words to share with you what they say tributes are supposed to be honest is honest and this morning as guidance counselor just starting to get to know Aiden it was a joy to always see that two fingers when you walk past him in the afternoon drive past him in the afternoon and I am humbled to stand here today to remember Aiden. When Aiden, was, when Aiden came to us, Aiden was a very humble and shy young man. Always have his head down. But I remember when, you know, as a guidance counselor, sometimes people wonder how strong are we? We are the strongest persons in the school because we come in contact with all students in the school. When the teacher will have a student, the guidance counselor will know that student. So I have known, I know Aiden, and I will share two things and take my seat. On one particular day, Aiden will have his head down, coming from the bathroom. I said to Aiden, what's wrong? Aiden was, replied was, sir, there's a group of boys in my class. These guys can testify to you that always trouble me, sir. So I said, Aiden, listen, man. You have a man of the thing, man. Aiden says, sir. I said, look at me, man. Aiden looked up and said, sir, what can I do? I said, when I die, I run you down. What do you do? <laughs> Aiden said, you pick up stone and fling off the dog. <laughs> That's a good response. But I said, Aiden, those stones, you have to make them stop. And one particular day, never forget, I heard a commotion downstairs. And I was saying, not no, Father, not no, I'm tired. And on my way downstairs, the hunter became the hunted. <laughs> that boy who was troubling Aiden throughout grade three, he became the hunted. Aiden and a group of boys was running him down. <laughs> and I said, Aiden, he said, sir, I ain't flinging no stone. <laughs> but I stood up to him. And from that day, trust me, Aiden and that boy became like this. You see, you see this. So Aiden was a boy whom I've watched, admired and groomed. He had his head down, and from that day, he stood up to that guy 
when he walked past you, he had his feelings up. He was confident. And he began to be confident. The second thing I'm going to say, The second thing I'm going to say, um, in guidance class, I asked the students to draw what they wanted to become. And Aiden had his head down in that book for a long time. And Aiden, when he finished, he said, Sir, this is my picture. And I said, you want to be a soldier? Aiden's response was, Yes, sir. And I said to him, And I said to him, Aiden, No matter where I am in this world, I'm going to come back and see you as a soldier. And that was, I left that with him, and Aiden's response to me was, Sir, I can. And I told the class, you can, you will, you must. And Aiden took that with him. And during the summer, during the summer, I walked past Aiden and said to him, Young man, September soon come. Remember what you promised. And that was the last time I spoke to Aiden. And on that dreadful night, that Sunday night, scrolling through Instagram, when I saw eight person got shot, my phone started to blow up. And when one call came in, I have many calls over the years, but this one, when it came in, the person said, Mr. Darwin, Aiden was shot. I said, I know two Aiden. I know Aiden from Moko, Goshen side. And I know one from Four Parts. Which one is it? She said, sir, the one from Four Parts. I dropped the phone. My wife can't tell you. I was never the same that night. I walked and walked and walked. And I said, father, I promised the young man. How can someone have the audacity and guts to go into a crowd and shoot persons, including that young man? Ladies and gentlemen, this taught me two things. Number one, you never know when your expiry date is there. Number two, while we are living, Live so that persons can have a true reflection of who he really is as a person. So, in remembering Aiden, parents, immediate family, friends, well wishers, dignitaries, pastors, I want to say this. Aiden is missed, he's loved. I will remember him because he's right here. That soldier will be watching over me and his classmates and the school. And last but not least, Aiden is resting. And on that day when my Jesus said, sound that horn, he will see mom, dad, and his family and his friends. So parents, hold strong. God is good all the time. God is able. God will. He will take care of you. Aiden, rest in peace. Thank you. Um, these boys have a, a short song for Aiden. So they're a bit nervous, but I'll be standing beside them. So let's hear what I have to say. Boys. I pray we all be ready. I pray we all be ready. I pray we all be ready for his
Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our young men say is that they pray me already. They pray me all be ready for his return. Thank you, God. We thank you. May you cover them with your blood. May you cover them, Lord, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Cover them, Lord. We all be ready. We go into our church. Selection by the Ebenezer Singer, after which we'll have the former teacher of Aiden, Miss Michelle. Irving, after which we have Tatiana Brown, a friend. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. We worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Andrea, we just want to say to you, the church family, that you're weeping now. But remember the word of God said, weeping may endure for the night. But joy cometh in the morning. Praise God. And you may be going through your storm at this time. But we serve a God that is mightier than the storm. One that is able to speak to your storm. And it will get calm. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. the 
power of his name.
permit me to adapt the protocols that are already established. Good afternoon. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me acknowledge the children in the house. Good afternoon, children. My association with Aiden was, I would deem, a privilege for me. I'm an educator, and many times you will meet multiple personalities within your classroom, and you will meet different styles of parenting that remain with you always. The, it's not just the bad things that stay with us. The good things also stay with us. I was privileged enough to work at the Four Pass Primary and Junior High School. And when you get to grade two, after leading grade, leaving grade two, they do an assessment and they want to pre prepare you for the grade three exam. I want to make sure that you are ready. And the school designed a program that would help students who did not reach the level that they think that made them ready to do the PEP exam at grade four. So they, was, they, were select, they had a select, select set of students who were placed in a special program. And I'm happy that they call it a special program because the children were special. And I was happy, and something that will stay with me forever, I was privileged to be that special teacher at one point. Let me get to Aiden. Among the group, we had students who had behavioral issues, and we had students who were, I would, they are not as fast in adapting to the curriculum as the others. Aiden was among the set that did not adapt the curriculum. His behavior was impeccable. Real general, you know. And I want to salute the parents. Mommy. Um, this society is evidence-based. And if you want, I can prove to you how many times mommy called asking, how do I help my child? I can testify the amount of time she is present, PTA. She come for consultation without being invited because she understood the challenges that Aiden had and she decided that my child, I'm gonna fight for my child. I'm gonna make sure that he gets the opportunity that he deserves. So she would call, she would ask for extra work. I remember, project is very important. And I know a lot of parents say, oh, teacher, trying to pass off some of the work that they have to do. But let me tell you, it's a great relation building activity for you and your child. The problem is, is when the parents start competing against each other. What the teacher wants is that students understand the concept. So it don't have to be from blocks and bricks, and, and, and it can be from cardboard, and we understand that child gets the concept. No, mommy. Mommy, I'm bossy, bossy, mommy, you know. When mommy called me, I said, miss, the project is not going to come in Friday. Give me until Monday. I am telling her, mommy, the project not have to be no big thing. You can make it out of cardboard or a few bucks, as long as Aiden understand the concept. No, she had to show out and show off. So come Monday morning, there is a huge project. The storyboard coming in, I had to find someplace special to put it in my classroom. And that is the effort that was poured into Aiden. Aiden was loved. You can see the love that he received. When children get to school, if they have challenges at home or if their parents 
are not affectionate towards them, you can tell. Aiden was that lovable type of child and he was not loud. He was a gentle soul. Man da pino. Man come a school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like a Monday morning. All oh, this clean and nice. And he's aware of his responsibility. He'll tell me, miss. I'm not going to do anything because I'm not going to take my clothes. <laughs> Real dapper. He'll walk in with his hands in his pocket. And he's standing there and miss. <laughs> you want to see so and so come. Dirty like a groom. <laughs> and he'll tell me point blank that he's not going to do certain things because he's not wanting clothes dirty up. Man bend down and brush off all his shoes. You know? He was the, and this is something that is cultivated at home and he he displayed always he was kind if somebody did something to Aiden you'll see the tears and it's a strong possibility that somebody will have to say to me Miss Irving you know that so and so fast with Aiden because I'll go to him and I'll say Aiden what is wrong and he'll be crying Aiden what is wrong and it takes him a time to actually come and say miss is such and such and such did something to me he will mourn gently and he, then he'll come and he'll tell you exactly and if Aiden says so you go I saw you go if him say miss I me first lick him I me first lick him but miss me never lick him so hot he's going to tell you exactly what he did Aiden it's beautiful that the choir sung that song because when I heard of the news, that's all I could say. Come Jesus, come. Come Jesus, come. Because what could be so... How could it happen? How could it happen? And I'm, I'm, I'm like, come Jesus, come. Call when me out after work, we start question if I'm ready, you know. As I hear the, the, the students sing, we, <coughs> um, I pray we all be ready. But I was bawling for Jesus to come because it's rough. But I want to pronounce something today. When you've lost your firstborn son, God is still God. Yes. When seven eight, three, four, two people died in one violent incident. God is still God. And when you're mourning until you feel the point that you're saying, God, take me now. God is still God. So while we mourn, let us remember that God is still in control and he Nothing, nothing or no one will replace him on that throne. So, if it's God, it's God. And I want to say to the parents, there's a Bible passage that says nothing will compare. The pain that you're feeling now, nothing will compare to the joy that you will have. But that joy comes with a certain requirement because you have to trust God. Ladies and gentlemen, the village no longer raised the child. But I'm going to ask you for every little one, God has charged us that you see, be kind to them because you just might be entertaining an angel unaware. I want to thank God for the few years that he has loaned Aiden to us. And I want to say to his parents, you were blessed because you raised an awesome boy. And if it's true, Aiden's robe will be as white and spotless because man are real dapper and in a pocket. So that's the type of person he is. And I pray that the parents will find it in their hearts to understand that God is still God.
Some glad morning, Jesus, Jesus. 
true and ultimate giver. We thank you for life. And we thank you for your son Jesus Christ who you gave to us all. The greatest gift of all. We thank you for the life of Aidan who we celebrate and remember fondly this day that you gave him and you have taken him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so God, even as we offer this, this offering in his remembrance, may you teach us how to use it wisely to help those who are in need and those who need to hear the word of God. But as we offer the gifts, help us to completely offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. So we ask you to accept gift and givers now and bless us. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is one scenario where you can't lose hope, you can't lose faith, you have to trust the Lord. Precious memories. I love Aiden so much. Like, whenever I go over and tell people, yes, I'm a son. Because they must say, oh, I look like your son. But most of people, most people know that it's Gally's son. But who knows, I say, yes, I'm a first son. And then, his mom and Gia, or both of our girls, Gally, recall Aiden as a very smart and brave little boy. But let me add how oh, adventurous and mischievous he was. He was never afraid to ask questions or say what's on his mind. Oh yes, I remember I changed my car thinking it was an upgrade, thinking I was a super cool person. Aiden first question upon seeing the car, then I got to really sell the car and buy the shoe. Me thinks that me upgrade my life, and he said, but if I didn't need to buy a car, my car would have a big muffler and sunroof, and it's not like a big life when he earns them a pass and jerky oats. <laughs> God bless Andrea with Aiden, her first child, whom she loved so much. If there's one thing for sure, it's when you see Gally, you see her with them. You never see one without the other, the other without the other. Supermarket, church, me and Pen, four pass, wherever it is, she and her children. I tried to come between them and realize the love alone never been. So I tried to buy my way in. So every time I visited, we carry sweetie, we carry toys, or something, you know, like for the kids that they like. So one day I was working in, I think it was St. Elizabeth, and I was just passing by just to say hi. And before Aiden say hi, Aiden say, you too long and you may walk with? Again, shame. So in order to make up for that, I have to buy two supper gen. Everybody knows that about six hundred dollar can't complain. Whenever his grandfather Wayne, or most of us know him as Dix, is doing any work or task in the home, he would always try to help simply by passing the tools 
or try to move something, even when he would, he could not, because he didn't believe he could do anything. Whether he tried in real life or watch it on YouTube, if no one do it. For example, when Nago rides his bicycle, he say, me alone can't skate this bicycle without brakes. You want me to show you? We said no, because we don't want him to drop. The only time he's incapable of doing something by himself is when it's time for him to go to in bed. And he's up at the shop and he'll whisper to Merle or Monica and say, follow back me. But he's not that loud enough because he's a big man. He don't want to see him weak. He loved coming to the country with me, which is not encouraging now. He would pull me one side and say, ask mommy if I can come with you. So most time I'd ask her, she'd say yes, but not until he finish him duty. And fast as that he didn't finish everything. Omar, clean him shoes, pack him toys and ready. You'll hear big splashes in the bathroom. He then a sing and a beard. When you're looking back, I know him back now wait. <laughs> you see, you know, until you're done beard, and not be that again. But he was still happy because he gets to go to country with me. He was very passionate about becoming a soldier in the future. Whenever he sees any soldier passing by, he would show him, Soji! They would wave, he would wave, and he would smile. Him and my friend, that once you wave, you're yeah, afraid. One occasion in particular, they stopped and engaged in a conversation with him, and even placed him in the back of the Jeep to stand up. Best day ever. Other occasion revealed how he would be a good soldier in the army. You see, when he asked him, mother, for something, she said, no. She can't take you, sir. You think you're going to talk to him? You could have called him in now and say, not until your mother give him. But when she not give him, he's still stuck beside her because he don't want to talk to nobody else but his mother. He had many nicknames from friends that he would go by, such as Papa D and Kente. The name Papa D came from Kendrick Scott and Splunt, while Kente came from his grandfather, which many people could have pronounced. But if you stay around long enough, you'll hear Gallier, his grandfather, Kente! Is either they need him for something or is being too curious. The family believe in eat what you grow, grow what you eat. So if you know the house, you're familiar, there's apple tree, mango tree, corn, pepper, everything you can name it. He was well cultured and usually would attend agricultural shows with his cousin Romain and his son. He even met the Prime Minister and other dictators before I did. Big 29 year old shame. I remember when it was apple season. And there were plenty of juicy ripe ones, but they were in the top of the tree. So Aiden said to me, "We can't pick them here, you know." I said, "No, man. I just asked Dix for the stick." By the time I asked Dix for the stick, Aiden already opened at the tree. So I said, "Kente," he said, "Just hold your hand and make sure you don't drop them." I believe he dropped everyone because I was so worried that he was gonna fall out of the tree. <laughs> Kenty said, I'm not trying to warm me, I'm going to just use my shirt. And he fold the shirt and carried on the upper them one by one. His mother was not pleased about this, by the way. <laughs> he was able to meet people from all walks of life, mainly because of his mom's business. Most of who became lifelong friends, they all loved and adored him. Friends were easy to make for him, as anybody passing by would always acknowledge him first, their little friend. He knew every single delivery man, bond man, wrigglies man, hearse man, friend of the family, truck driver, you name it. And then there were two. His little brother Ajani joined the pact. That's his best friend. Ajani would patiently wait in the evenings just to see his brother strolling in from school. And you hear, Kente, 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 big smiles. And they would play the whole evening. They shared everything and he helped him in so many ways. I know we may ask why, why Aiden, but we may not understand this difficult, uncertain situation that had happened around us, or to us, but God does. God does not promise that we will not face difficulties or fears. He does promise that he is, he is there and able to get us through it. Like the famous songwriter says, no matter what you're going through, remember that God is using you. For the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. So keep on marching, my handsome sweet boys. Sleep on, my soldier. I salute you forever. Love, Auntie Mochi.
like a comet blazing across the evening sky, like a rainbow fading in the twinkling of an eye, shiny, sparkly, and splendidly bright, here one day, gone one night, like the loss of the sunshine on a cloudy afternoon, like a castle built up on a sandy beach, like a flower that is just beyond your reach, born to amuse, to inspire, and to delight, here one day, gone one night. Like a sunset, dying in the rising of the moon, gone too soon, gone too soon. Adam Anthony Bartley, Kente, gone too soon. Members of the clergy, bereaved family members, well wishers, friends, good afternoon. We gather here today with heavy hearts to say goodbye to a bright young soul who was taken from us far too soon. Adon Anthony Bartley was just eight years old, but in his brief time with us, he touched the hearts of many with his gentle nature, playful spirit, and boundless potential. Born on Christmas Eve, December 24, 2015, at Denby Hospital in Clarendon, Adon entered this world as a Christmas gift to his parents, Andrew Burton and Gracia Bartley. He was a quiet child, observant and thoughtful, always taking in the world around him. At Fogo Road Infant School, where he spent his early years, he was known for being reserved, yet dedicated to his work. And while he might not have been the loudest in the room, he was always present, making friends and bringing joy to those around him. His playful nature shone through when he, when he was with his classmates, forming bonds that would last a lifetime. Aiden moved to Denby Primary School and later to Four Parts Primary and Junior High, where he continued to blossom. Though still a quiet and reflective boy, Aiden was kind, always willing to lend a hand, whether at school or at home. His family could always count on him to help with whatever was needed. His little brother especially looked up to him and their bond was inseparable. Aidan often filled the house with chatter, his vibrant energy bringing life to those around him. He was the kind of child who left an impression, not because of how loudly he spoke, but because of the depth of his kindness. His maternal grandmother, for his maternal grandmother, Aiden was an idol, someone she cherished deeply. For his grandfather, Wayne, he fondly called him the man in the yard, someone he waited so long for. But tragically, this special bond was cut short by the cruel hands of fate. Aidan was a fighter from the very start of his life. After his birth, he spent over a week in the hospital, showing his resilience even as a newborn. And in his short life, he continued to demonstrate the same strength. He faced challenges with quiet determination, never giving up. Even as he looked forward to the simplest joys, a Sunday ice cream from the bike man, a birthday party filled with love and gifts, Aiden was full of hope, full of life. But on August 11, 2024, our world forever changed. Aiden 
was taken from us in a senseless act of violence. His bright future, his laughter, his love, stolen in an instant. And as we try to make sense of this tragedy, we find ourselves clinging to the memories, the moments, and the impact he made in his short time with us. You came to us with laughter bright, a spark of joy, a shining light. With little hands and eyes so wide, in you such love could not be denied. Though your time with us was far too brief, you filled our hearts with joy and grief. For every smile, for every tear, we feel your presence still so near. The star now hold you in their glow, where peace and love forever flow. No more hurt, no more fear, no more fight. You're safe in eternal light. Though Eden's physical presence has left us, we believe his spirit lives on. His laughter, his kind heart, his playful energy will forever remain with us, lighting our hearts even in the darkest of times. Though we must part, we will meet once more on heaven's bright and distant shore. Until that day, we hold you near in every moment, every tear. To his mother, Andrea, and father, Chase, his sister, brothers, brother, grandparents, and all the loved ones, may you find comfort in knowing that Adam's legacy is one of love, kindness, and resilience. Remember, those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and very dear. He may have been with us for only eight short years, but his impact will last a lifetime. As we remember Edom, let us find strength in the words from the song, Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. Would it be the same if I saw you in heaven? Edom, rest in peace, sweet angel. You may no longer be here with us, but you will forever remain in our hearts. Goodbyes are not forever, are not the end. It simply means we will miss you until we meet again. Shine on, bright star, shine on. Your light will be felt forever. Sleep on, sleep on. Sleep on. I thank you.
and a very present help in times of trouble. And so we commend you to this God who is refuge and strength. Let me echo the welcome extended earlier on, and I know that some persons would have gotten here after the welcome was extended. We're grateful in having you here, standing in solidarity with the grieving family, parents and loved one of Ada. I ask of us to turn our attention to the Word of God. And I'll read two verses of Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Hear these words. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Let us bow in prayer. Let us pray. Grief stricken and broken, sad and weak. We bow before you, O Lord God of hosts. And we thank you that when we are weak, you are strong. And so we look to you in this moment, this moment of weakness. And we ask of you to give us strength to make it through the days ahead. Oh God, hear our prayer and have mercy upon us. We wait on you. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. It would be remiss of me not to say thanks to our leader, Deacon Thomas Hilton, and to welcome our brother and friend, Pastor Sheldon Gibbons, who has already uh, been service here. When we read this psalm, a psalm attributed to David, we hear a cry unto God, soliciting God's help. And we can't help asking ourselves some questions regarding the psalm. For one of the questions I believe is reasonable for us to ask is this. What was really happening in David's life at that moment when he wrote this psalm, which originally was a song, but for us it's a psalm. What was really happening in his life? And certainly we don't have the benefit of any historical facts. But from our reading of this psalm, and hearing this desperate cry for help. We, we, we have to come to the conclusion that something wrong had happened 
something had gone really wrong right. in the life of the psalmist. And of course, David is well known in scripture. We, we know him quite well from Sabbath school and Sunday school. We know of David. We know of how he killed Goliath with a sling and a stone. We know that he was a shepherd boy. We know that he was one of Jesse's son, the last one to watch Delhi. We know. But we know that God had a special love for this, this man David. And that without his knowing, God had appointed him to be king in Israel. In fact, the greatest king in Israel's history. That even before his birth, God knew him and God appointed him. Glory to God. And we just can't sit up. How God knew Aiden from his birth. And how he appointed him to be the youngster, the child, the youngster that he was. That has brought joy to many of us that we are here today celebrating his life and testifying of the little things he did and said that brought joy and fond memories. But David, David, a man who God declared at a point that he is a man after my own heart. But yet, in spite of that, David had trouble in his life. Not you? Trouble in his life. And we don't know at what point that David wrote this psalm. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. It sounded as if something serious was going on in David's life. It sounded as if there was trouble. Perhaps there was distress. Perhaps there was death. Perhaps there was sickness. We don't know. But we, we believe with our hearts that something had gone wrong. And David knew that whatever had gone wrong, no man around him, no friend, no father, no family member could solve this problem, could fix it. So he appealed unto his creator to help him in the time of his trouble. The biblical scholars, scholars tell us that the word David used in verse 1 for cry is not the kind of cry or sobbing that many of you have been doing today. It is what we would refer to as bow out to God. When he says, hear my cry, it's like, hear my bow out to you, God. Because I have no other help but you. Only you alone can help me. For this is too much for me. That word is almost like a scream. You know when somebody really in trouble? And they scream out. And you know that that is a scream of despair. It needs attention fast. That is the kind of cry David cried out. Rina, the Hebrew word for cry, is a piercing cry. It may be a cry of joy. 
But we believe in David's case. It's a cry of distress, of grief, of pain, of sorrow, of brokenness, of war. And so he cried out to God. Today in this place, in this funeral service, this thanksgiving service to God. Give us the circumstances that have brought us here. I wonder, with all that has been said and done, if this is the time for us to cry out to God. I heard Sergeant when he came saying that things can't continue so in Jamaica. It can't! Have you heard it before? For hundreds of funerals like this have taken place where innocent children have been slaughtered by the hands of wicked people. And if we're not careful, we, we can't we get to the stage where another child being killed is an unknown that. Like we become accustomed to it, like we become numb, like it doesn't mean anything. But perhaps today, by the grace of God, this might just be the straw that breaks the camel back. This land needs a mighty healing. 
where whatever happened, he was crying out to God with every strength, with every breath, but not sensing and feeling the nearness that he once had with his God. For to be near to God is a beautiful thing. Though the, psalm, though the scripture tells us that in God's presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. And sometimes it gets to the point where distress, where grief, where sorrow, where death. All of these things push us far from God. I don't know if there's anybody here who, who can testify about that. But I know in my own experience that sometimes I don't feel like I am near to God. And some people take it as a comfort zone. They are comfortable when they are not near to God. But the psalmist David was not comfortable with that. He wanted to be in the bosom of his God. For in God's presence his fullness of joy. I wonder what happened at church we live. And what has been happening in our lives in this land has caused any of us to feel like we are far from God. That we cry out to God and we're not hearing Him, we're not feeling Him, we're not sensing Him. I wonder, because if that is the case, there is a remedy. There is a remedy. We need to cry some more. We need to cry more sincerely. We need to cry more earnestly. Perhaps we need to change our posture. If we standing, we must be kneeling. And if we're kneeling, we must be prostrating, spread out before God for the situations in our life and in our land. I remember a friend telling me something about somebody he knew. He was explaining something to me. And he said, that person when they pray, they don't go down on their knees.
people of God, congregation, don't be comfortable far from God. For what is happening in this land, it is dangerous to be far from God. Any minute now, the wicked one can target us. And we never know God's plan. Hmm? We never know the day and the hour. So it is wise for us to be near to God. To be dear to God. To be sheltered in His arms. But things cannot get no worse than it is now. Cry out to God. From the ends of your earth. I tell you, you need Him. Every hour. Most gracious Lord, for no tender voice like that. Can peace of you. Can I make a final point? When we read the Psalms, in just these two verses, not only what was his situation and where was his location. But we have to ask, when? When? For I believe it encourages action. And so the psalmist says, hear my cry, O Lord, O God, and attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto thee? When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That situation of being overwhelmed is not an easy situation. Overwhelmed. When your heart is overwhelmed, it seems as if it is at the point of doom. It seems as if the heart is so overburdened, so buried deep in distress and trouble. Not only God knows what we experience. When one is overwhelmed, it seems as if you are totally overpowered by the situation completely defeated devastated when one is overwhelmed perhaps one is breathing the last breath but it is at that point the psalm is said he requests of God to lead him to the rock that is higher than him. Yes. At that point where no other help can help. At that point where police can help, liar can help, doctor can help, mother and father at that point of being overwhelmed which no one else can truly experience than you who, who is in the situation and I never hear of anybody gone into the greatest cardiologist and said doctor my heart overwhelmed give me an injection Give me medication for that too big for mortal man to handle. But there is a rock that is higher than us. When we get to that point, 
we may God to lead us to the rock. Note that David can't even find the rock by himself. Though he's a man after God's own heart. For his situation is so grievous. His eyes are filled with tears. He has been crying out to God. Even if they rock them before him, he can't see it. Have to beg God to take him by the hand and lead him to the rock, which is higher than it. The gracious God did lead him, and the gracious God. If I know you are bad today, probably I you are bad tomorrow. Hallelujah! If it's not you grieving today, perhaps it's you grieving tomorrow. It will be wise for us to be sheltered under that rock, which is Jesus. Don't wait until trouble come at our doors. But seek a friend before we need a friend. And that friend is Jesus, our Savior, who died for us. And when we seek in our friend, don't just seek him for ourselves. We need to seek him for this land, Jamaica. Because things can continue so. God has blessed us specially with gifts and talents and wonderful people. We have to take a stand. No more of this in the name of Jesus. We have to take a stand. Maybe that Aiden's thanksgiving service will not be in vain. That all of you who loved him and cared for him and are keeping his memory in your hearts will come in together that we will take a stand in this land for the sake of other children who are growing up. Satan set him high already. That we will draw close to the rock and ask him to cover them under his mighty wings. The psalm writer says this in his song in times like these. We need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he is the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and brings the solid rock. It
in our parish, in our community, there is a rock. Pastor Gibbons will come to pray this prayer for the family members. I ask of the congregation to stand as we show solidarity to family members may remain seated. Family members may remain seated. But the rest of the congregation, let us stand together in solidarity. And if you're here today and you need a pastor to pray for you specially, just raise your hand. God bless you, I see that hand. If you really, really feel it in your gut, the grief of these parents, grandparents, Sibling, a journey, little a journey, almost lost his life also. Raise your hand and say, God, God see me here. Me here. I am grieving. I need your help. God bless you. Our God and our Father, from the foundation of time, you have been our God, and even until this moment, you are still our God. Faithful is your character, and hope in you we stand today. Lord, we remember the family of our young brother today standing in the midst looking at his casket only eight years old and so lord even at this time as human beings there are many questions that we ask why but lord in your words someone said in the grave beyond we will understand it much better and so lord as we struggle to understand this cruel and wicked act. We pray for the family members, especially for the mother. After the support group has gone, and Lord, as she will remember her son, we pray, of God, that you will stand with her in the time of her trouble, in the time of her grief and pain, Lord, we ask you now, Lord, to stand with us as a community. Lord, as we are going through this, we ask you, oh God, you are the God of our comfort. And so we can borrow from the words today of David that we are calling out to you that God, our hope, is built upon you. So, Lord, in this time, we ask you to give us hope. As we leave from this place of God, we're asking you to shed your hope on your people. Lord, we thank you for the family members that God will help them to go through this time. And Lord, after the calls and the cards and the person visiting us, God, and, and, and life becomes normal, but Lord, they will be still living with the fact of this dreadful act. But God, in our midnight struggles, sometimes in the midnight hours, when memories start to lurk within our minds, you are the God that is faithful, that will come and whisper peace to us, God. I pray, oh God, that you will whisper peace in their heart. And so, Lord, help them to understand, oh God, as much as this hurt their feeling, God, vengeance come from you, God. And in time, God, you shall do everything. In time, God, you will stop the wars and the fighting. In time, oh God, for you are God. And your word is clear that you are Alpha and Omega. So as we leave from this place, and Lord, as we go, to the place of internment. Lord, we pray that you'll cover us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
I pray God that you send out the battalion of angels. For God, some time you are some evil to us. But God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are going to the burial spot. And we walk into that burial spot in the name of Jesus. And Father, discharge of the angels. God of mercy, as we go through God, sing the songs of Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our voices be heard. God, as we go to that spot, Makala Mahusaya. As we go to that spot, sometimes the enemy is near. But in the name of Jesus, draw your sword to the God. Be a seed and butter to the God. Fight against them. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we leave from this place, this part of the angel of this Lord, the righteous are come before us, Lord. Come before us, Lord. And do thy work thyself. Walk in this place here today. I said, come on the family members. I said, come on the family members. In the name of Jesus, watch your territory, Master God. Watch your territory. Watch your footpaths. Watch your the environment. Jesus, we are depending upon you. Tear on every walls and divide. And lead your people. From victory hand to victory, your harm is shadow lead to every fall is foundish, and Christ is Lord indeed. Amen. And amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. You have been a very good congregation. We're praying for the cooperation as we will recess. Of course, we will be heading to the place of interment in four parts. And we will recess in this order. Our choir will go first, followed by the ministers on the platform. Then we will have the casket and the family members, and after that, the congregation. So the partners, please get yourself in position. Friends, you're asking that you cooperate with us. Our closing hymn and recessional hymn, God sent his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove. My Savior lives because he lives. So
It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you. Why'd you have to leave so soon? Yeah. Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you without feeling much worse. I know you're in a better place, but it's always gonna hurt. Carry on. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you How do I breathe without you? I'm feeling so cold. I'll be waiting right here for you till the day you're home. Carry on. Give me all the strength I need to carry on. So let the light guide you. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you. How do I say goodbye to what we have? The good time that made us laugh, I'll wait the bad. I thought we get. Forever gone away. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I don't know where this road is going.
and I'll take
Yeah. 